Barakatu. Zakallah khairan for joining in tonight. <clears throat> As we covered a few uh, words last week, and you know we're on the topic of Quranic Arabic and trying to cover those frequently used words throughout the Quran, inshallah, so that whenever they do come across, you know, now, now inshallah, we'll have an idea of what the verse uh, um, will mean eventually, inshallah, if we get a few more uh, uh, frequent used words in our vocabulary or in, in you know in our minds, inshallah, it's going to help us um, understand the Quran or one step closer to understanding the Quran, inshallah, ta'ala. I know we didn't cover uh, much last week. Uh, it will take, uh, I guess, a bit of time, inshallah, but slowly but surely, inshallah. Uh, I think if we do take it a little bit slower, then inshallah, we could, you know, um, reinforce it within ourselves and in our minds, inshallah. But, um, you know, I do want this to be a, a bit more uh, interactive, inshallah. So um, let's, let's, let's see what we remember, I guess, from last week, inshallah. So, I mean, I guess, you know, as you see the words on the screen, I guess we got to find out what it means, inshallah. So, I mean, I wouldn't recommend using the, the chat box because it'll take forever to, like, you know, relay the answer. If you know the answer, just, you know, you, you could just say the answer, inshallah, and then we'll move on to newer words. Inshallah. So, I mean, the first, the first, so if, if we start from um, the right side, We'll be going over this uh, uh, this word first, hada. So that was the first word that we did last week, actually. Uh, does anyone know what that means? It's been hit right, yeah, so hada means this, right? I mean, yeah. <laughs> Please don't be shy. Just, you know, speak up, inshallah, if you know it, so that we can... Uh, Move on with this. That's the one for the masculine gender. Yes, right. For the masculine gender, for you know, using for or referring to a male or masculine, you know, uh, pronoun, uh, a person, place, or thing, right? Inshallah. So yeah, that's correct. It means this, and it's highlighted in blue, so that means it is for the masculine gender. Um, let's go on to the next one. Dalika. What does uh, dalika mean? Does anyone know what dalika means, or does anyone remember? that yeah mashallah that right so yep dhalika means that right and that's also they're both used for the masculine gender right that you know something that is close by i'm gonna say hadha regarding it or, you, or you'll say hadha or allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will use hadha in the quran regarding something that's close by something that's near and the dhalika will be used for something that's you know a, a bit further away so just like we use in english right that over there it's gonna, you know, it's gonna uh, refer to something that's kind of uh, distanced away from yourself, right? Uh, we also went over in the beginning of last week, you know, what are some types of words that are used or types of vocabulary that are, that, that are used throughout the Quran and, and in the Arabic language. Um, the next word, ism, is it's not, you know, it's not uh, part of the, uh, I guess, the frequent, frequent, frequent uh, used words that we that we learned last last week. But it means a type of word, right? That's gonna come out throughout the Quran in mul you know multiple times in, in in per ayah, right? Does anyone know what uh, ism refers to? What kind of uh, what type of word it refers to? Noun. Yeah, perfect, right? Mashallah, ism means noun, right? Just like you know, in our own language as well, we use ism for someone's name, right? Um, and even in, in even in Bismillah Rahman Rahim, that first or second the second word is you know ism right, and the first the first letter is ba, and then ism right Bismillah right with the name of Allah right. So yeah, that's correct a noun that is referring to a noun. So nouns will come uh, ism or asma right the plural of that is asma, which comes throughout the Quran as well, um, means nouns or names right. Uh, moving on to the next uh, part hadhi right. So, I mean, it's pretty easy. So, I guess, you know, Hadihi is right across Hadha. So, it means, uh, you know, what does Hadihi mean? This. this. Feminine. This. Exactly, right? This female. for this feminine. Female. 
Yeah, correct. This female, or you know, referring to a female pronoun, or or, or you know, an object in the Arabic language, which uh, is feminine, right? Like I said last week, uh, you know, we had um, uh, ummatun, right? Ummatun was a female word, right? Ummatun means nation, like the ummah of the Prophet Muhammad. So in Arabic, ummatun will be a female or feminine word because of that circle ta at the end of the word, like I said last week as well, right? Similar to, you know, the Urdu language as well, right? So you have the ta at the end sometimes, which kind of denotes that this is a feminine word. So you're going to have to use, you know, uh, ki and not ka right before it, right? So, you know, something like that. So hadi, yeah, means this for feminine uh, pronoun. Right. And then the next thing is another type of word, right? Just like ism was a type of word, we also said that there was ism, there was a fi'al, a verb, which is going to be, you know, used throughout the Quran as well. And we'll try to go over those as well later on. Um, but then there's there's this last uh, category of, of words, harf, right? Which is it's pretty easy because it's also in, you know, your, your our own languages as well. Some of our own languages, we use the word harf as well, which means... Harf means um, anyone? Letters. Particles. Perfect. Right? Yeah. Letters. So just like how I gave the example of... Um, yes. So just like how I gave the example of Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, the first letter is a harf, right? That first ba, you know, it's a ba. Like, for example, if our, if our child looks at that ba in a qaeda, they, they won't know what that means. It's just a ba to them, right? But if you look at that, you know, if, if, if that ba is connected through nouns, meaning, you know, asma, isms throughout the Quran, like for example, ism, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, those, those letters, they mean something, right? They're, they're going to mean multiple things so, as, as sometimes, right? So for example, we take the example of Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, or just the, just the beginning of that, Bismillah, right? So the ba is a harf, then the next word ism is an ism, it, it's a noun, it's a name, and then the word after that is also a noun as well, which is the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? So with the name of Allah. So, I mean, by that, with, with that translation, we kind of already know what ba means or ba stands for here, which is a letter, which means with, right? That we take the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we start, you know, we start various things. We start reading the Quran. We start coming to the masjid. We start doing, you know, uh, different actions throughout the word with the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So ba over there means with, right? So even so it's like, you know, sometimes just, just a single letter could mean a lot of meanings throughout the Quran, right? Inshallah, which, which, which would look like, you know, nothing to a, a, a child, for a child to look at the letter, they won't know what that means. But I mean, inshallah, hopefully if we learn the letters later on, um, we could start applying that, inshallah, when we recite the Quran ourselves. And the last one is tilka, right? Tilka is, you know, uh, um, does anyone know what tilka means? That was the last word that we did last week. That, that female. That, exactly. Right? That for... The feminine pronoun, right? Just like how dalika, we use dalika, like dalika al kitab, al kitab, the book, it was a you know masculine word. Tilka, we use that for uh, uh, for ummatun as well, right? Tilka ummatun qad khalat, right? That was a verse, or that was an example that we did last week. Tilka ummatun qad khalat, that that nation has passed, right? So referring to a nation that has already, they're already deceased, they're already passed away, they're gone. They're, they're not next to me right now. They're not next to us, right? They're not in the society. That tilka ummatun, right? If, if that community or that nation was, you know, in that context within, you know, society, then then maybe Allah would have used hadihi, right? Hadihi ummatun. And then, you know, whatever, what comes after that. But um, but he used tilka to refer that, you know, they're gone. They're long gone. They're, they've already passed, right? So tilka for a feminine pronoun is used for that, right? So that's, uh, you know, pretty easy, mashallah. That's pretty good. So uh, we'll move on to the next two. Um, like, so like I mentioned last week that there were six uh, demonstrative pronouns that we were going to cover. And then we're going to cover three relative pronouns, right? Three relative pronouns, which we'll, you know, shall cover uh, later on. But let's finish these six. So we did four so far. Hada, this, dalika, that. And then we have hadihi, which also means this, and tilka, which also means that. And I'm sure if you guys read Quran throughout this whole week, it came so many times throughout the Quran, right? It, it comes multiple times. Maybe if you're listening to Quran or reading Quran or listening to someone else, you know, like an audio or MP3 player or something or something on your phone, it'll come a lot, right? You just have to keep your ears open. Hada, you know, lahada, bihada. Maybe it comes in different forms and shapes, right? Sometimes. 
Um, but it'll come a lot throughout the Quran, inshallah. And then, uh, you know, if you identify it, then that will, inshallah, keep keep it more reinforced within ourselves, right? Then we, then we know, okay, how that means this, right? So that will always, inshallah, stick with you as well as we move on. <clears throat> okay, inshallah, to move on to the next uh, two. So the next two uh, demonstrative pronouns, right? So we did four so far. The next two are these two here. So as you can see here that, you know, two demonstrative pronouns, yes. This was the whole... Uh, gender or you know uh, a singular and plural kind of legend over here that you know male is blue female is pink and then plural will come in uh yellow right and as you can see here the next two words that we'll be covering they're in yellow so that means these are plural these are used for multiple people right more than two three people right so um let's go over the first one real quick and um you know these are a bit longer words than the other ones we, we know hadha hadhi those are all smaller words very easy to kind of grasp these are you know, a, a bit a bit longer, so I even wrote it down here in like English, you know, like transliteration that ha ulai, right? Ha ulai, which means these, right? So it's similar to hada, which you know means similar in the sense where it's referring to something that's nearby, right? That you know, if I have a lot, if, if I have a lot of apples, I'll say ha ula, right? These apples, right? And they'll, like in my hand or in my basket, right? So. In that sense, it's similar to hada. It's similar to hadihi, and then you know, for hada, use for masculine, one person or one 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 item or one object, and then hadihi, you also use for you know one object, one person. But but then if there's more than you know, if there's more than uh, two people, if there's you know multiple people, or if there's multiple objects or multiple apples or books, etc., then you'll move on to haulai. Haulai will be used in the Quran, and I have examples here to the uh, from the Quran. To you know, uh, help guide us, inshallah. So ha ulai means these, and um, it's plural, right? And then we go to the next word, which is, is, is simple as well. Ulaika, right? Ulaika, right? So they they kind of sound similar a little bit. That one has a ha, and you know, e even that you know in Arabic, just a, a small nuance here is that the ha in this is also you know that ha kind of denotes that something is near, right? Something you know, like for example, hadihi. And hada, they both have the ha in the beginning, so that means something is you know close by, right? So you know wherever there's a ha uh, attached to these uh, these uh, pronouns, usually it means something like that, right? <clears throat> and uh, if you look at the next word ulaika, there's no ha, so that means you know this is not referring to something that's nearby to you. So ulaika, which means those, right? So the only difference here is that um, one is close to you and one is far, right? There's no there is no specific gender here, meaning there is no, you know, th th these can't only be used for masculine uh, nouns or, you know, for, for, you know, for a person that's uh, like a male or, you know, multiple males, uh, or it's not restricted to also only feminine, right? Feminine, pro uh, feminine nouns, right? But it's for both, right? So in that, in that, in the gender case uh, or like uh, in the sense of gender, it's the same there right? for, for both, both can be used. Uh, or, I mean, this, these words can be used for both male and female. And also, um, uh, uh, the only difference is that one is near and one is far away, right? So you're for, so you're referring to something that's close by, ha ulai, like these apples. Or if there's apples on a tree far away from you, then you'll say, okay, those apples, right? Ulaika, right? And then you know apples like tufah, right? So ulaika, uh, those are apples over there, right? So that's the only difference that near and far, right? Some one ha ulai is close by, near. And ulaika is far, but in the sense where uh, the, there's no gender specific thing here, and they're both they're they're both plural, right? Both of them are plural, so it should be easy to uh, catch on to. And then with the you know examples, hopefully it'll be more easier. So this is just uh, like a uh, um, I guess a brief overview of the examples. I'm gonna break it down on the next slide as well. So just like we said, ha ulai on this side. If you look at the pointer, that ha ulai, which means these in English. And it's plural, right? For both male and, or in masculine and feminine pronoun, uh, nouns. The example here that, you know, uh, is قَالُوا إِنَّ هَا أُولَاءِ لَضَالُونَ So this is from Surah Mutaffifin in the Quran, where, you know, it says over here, they would say, indeed, these are the astray people, I meaning they're the misguided people, right? So the, the thing that we're looking at here is هَا أُولَاءِ, right? هَا أُولَاءِ And, you know, also, you can also keep in mind that, you know, in these examples, maybe something, you know, maybe something in the past that we did might come again. So you also keep those in mind. Like, for example, 
if 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 an, if an example in the future hada comes or hadi he comes then at least you can remember that as well okay hada came hada means this or you know tilka means that etc right so keep that in mind inshallah as we go so qalu inna haula ila dhalun the word haula i used in this example of the quran then ulaika also ulaika which means those plural as well for both you know no no specific gender and the the verse in surah bayyana right surah bayyana in the 30th juz ulaika hum khayrul bariya right ulaika hum khayrul bariya those are the best of creatures right those people are the best of creatures so then inshallah let's break it down <clears throat> so the first example of haula so the, i i the, there's a few examples here because i said that it's not specific to any gender so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could use it for both male and female in the quran when he, when, he, when he's using it in the quran or sometimes it could be used for only females or sometimes it could only be used for males as well right um there isn't many examples of that usually when these two words haula'i and ulaika are when they when they are both used in the quran it's usually referring to both like you know a group of people regardless of their gender right but sometimes i guess there's an example here where allah does use it one time for uh, you know referring to only females but let's 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 break this down inshallah haula'i these yes so that's the example there on top let's break it down here from this side from the right side qalu right this is a part of the verse not the whole verse but qalu in surah mutaffifin allah says qalu they would say inna which is you know indeed and i think that word also came before right uh, in the previous examples inna indeed to you know build emphasis here and then the word that we're looking at is haula'i right these are right that these are who are they you know what is it referring to people objects nouns what is it referring to right haula'i these la ladallun right so the actual the whole word is ladallun together but i can't just split it up into lam and then adallun is also there right so ladallun la means you know uh, surely right that it's just adding on the inna right it's adding on the inna over here just to give it more emphasis right so for example like i said before uh, for the example of ba right ba looks is just one letter but it has a lot of meanings right so just like that there are other letters you know out there that that you know if they're attached to some nouns or words they're going to give a more intense meaning right so lam over here is is you know is used for that lam when you put a lam with a fatha on a noun or sometimes even on a verb it's going to intensify the meaning so ladallun right that there are only the astray people or the misguided people but surely indeed you know without a doubt these people are misguided right these people are astray so allah just you know using these words as emphasis so la mean surely and then ladallun astray right dallun same thing is kind of like you know and surah fatiha dallin right they're the same word just different uh, um i guess uh just a uh, just a different grammatical placement of the word in the sentence right but ladallun غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين same word right people that are astray people that are misguided but i mean nevertheless the thing that we're looking at here is haula'i these are right the allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says these people are the ones who are astray so before you know before this verse allah properly explained already that you know if they do this if they do this bad thing or this bad sin or this uh, this and that then these people are astray right so he's referring to that whoever whoever follows in these footsteps right or uh, you know whatever they were or whoever you know uh, um checks off the list of this sin and that sin and you know this wrong doing and maybe you know interest zina or you know eating haram all that stuff kind of stuff then in naha ulai ladallun these people that fit this criteria these people are the straight people right so i mean you know it's it's beautiful to see that you know allah uses specific words for different you know for 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 you know uh, to really show emphasis as well right to show that these people right here who follow these satanic footsteps are the astray people right but yeah how will i these are so it's referring to these people could be either male or female whoever fits into the criteria whether it's a male or female or you know nowadays you know like any gender right any person any creature who does wrong things they're going to be astray right so it's not it's not you know restricted to one you know one person or only males or only females or only you know this demographic but anyone right these plural no 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 specific gender right so that's that that's an example of surah mutaffifin where allah you know it gives a a a um i guess a general uh, uh um uh, is an example for for anyone that fits in that criteria 
I have one question. Uh, yes. Uh, in the last, first lesson, you said inni is also indeed, and inna is also indeed. Yes. So yeah. So inna is the actual word. So inna in, inna is the actual word. That, that means indeed. And then when you say inni with a ya, it means that you know it's 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 referring to the person talking. Like for example, inna is like for example over here in this verse inna. Indeed, these people. So, so it's referring to these people. And then when you say inni, it's referring to the person speaking. So if I say inni, that means inni, you know, inni imamun, right? I am indeed an imam, right? Or if you say inni, like, you know, inni doktor, that I am indeed a doctor. So when you add the ya to it, when you add the ya to it, it's referring to the person speaking, right? the, the, the first person. Make sense, inshallah? Yeah. Inshallah. So yeah, if that makes sense, hopefully that hopefully that makes sense. So inna yeah. is the actual word. Yeah, inna is the actual word being used. And then you can add, you know, different pronouns to inna. Like, for example, that ya is referring to, you know, the first person, myself. If I add a different pronoun, that could mean, you know, my mother or you know, someone else, or inna who, you know, indeed that person over there, right? So you can add other things to inna, but the actual base word is inna, which means indeed, inshallah. Right. So yeah. So that was the first example. That was. Okay. No. Thank you. Uh, so this. Uh, where I come? Exactly. The question. Uh, so that yeah. That was the first example, which is referring to plural. No one. No. Uh, uh, specific gender. If you look at example two now, right? Example two is on the left side, and then example three is on the right side. So example two, this is referring to uh, um, feminine, uh, a, a feminine group of people in the Quran, right? So Hijr. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Qala ha ula'i banati. Right? Qala ha ula'i banati. So this is actually being said by Lut alayhi salam. Right? Prophet Lut. And he's saying that Qala, he said, Lut alayhi salam, ha ula'i. These are. These meaning, you know, someone that's close to him. Someone maybe inside of his house. Right? He's referring to his daughters. Banati. These are my daughters. People that are, his daughters are living with him. And he's, you know, is indicating and he's pointing towards them and saying, these right here next to me, living in my house under my roof, these are my daughter, right? So there's a little picture in the bottom by saying, you know, this is like, you know, he's referring to these daughters in his house right here, right? So over here in the Quran, this is obviously strictly for a feminine, you know, it's used for his daughters, not for his sons or his, or his, uh, you know, his brothers or his uncles, but only for his daughters, right? So haulai can be used only for feminine, you know, for only, only for a group of, uh, like a group of women or, a a, a, um, a a an object which is a feminine you know feminine object in Arabic, or it could be used for masculine as well, or for both plural right for both it could be referred to for both together. So that was an example of feminine right in the Quran and, and, and like there there aren't many examples in the Quran that um, specify the gender like this one. So this is like the, maybe the, you know maybe one of the only examples in the Quran. So qala uh, ha banati right. He said these right here are my daughters referring to. A feminine group of people, you know, in other words, his daughters. And then the example of a masculine only referring to a, a masculine group of people. Uh, in the same surah, you know, previously, the two, three verses, two, three, two, three verses before that, he says, uh, Lut alayhi salam says, Qala, he said, Inna, again, indeed comes, in, you know, Inna comes a lot throughout the Quran. So, Qala, he said, Lut alayhi salam, Inna, indeed, Ha ulai, these are Dhaifi. <clears throat> my guests, right? And his guests were at, at that time in, in the context of the surah, the angels that came. So, you know, they were masculine. You know, they came in the shape of a of men, right? They didn't come in the shape of a woman, but they came in the shape of, uh, you know, a, a human man. So he referred to them as ضيفي, my guest, meaning they're my, my male guests, right? So, قَالَ إِنَّ هَا أُولَاءِ ضيفي. Lut alayhi salam said, Inna, indeed, هَا أُولَاءِ These right here, sitting in my home, sitting on my sofa, these are my guests, you know, the angels that came, uh, my guests, right? In the, in the masculine, in the masculine, um, you know, tone, right? So these are examples, three examples of, you know, one, the first example, the main one, qala inna ha ulai la dalun, refers to, you know, it's, it's for any group of person or any person that fits their criteria of misguidance, you know, uh, of being astray. And the second example, qala ha ulai banati, only refers to his daughters, you know, right? she's not referring to his sons, or else he would, or, or else he would use a different word. Or maybe, uh, you know, if he was referring to his whole household, maybe you know, whoever else is in the house, then he would use, you know, maybe ahal or a different word, right? But he used banati to refer to strictly his daughters. 
And then example three for the masculine, you know, also referring to the angels who came in the human male form, right? These are my guests, like sitting in my living room. These are male, right? So these are, I guess, some examples in the Quran of, you know, three different perspectives of, of the word. That they can be used for only feminine, they can be used for only masculine, and they can be used for both, you know, together at the same time as well. So how would I will come, uh, you know, a bunch of times throughout the Quran as well, inshallah ta'ala, right? So before we go on to the next uh, example, ula'ika, so, so uh, for, for how would I, there were examples of, you know, only feminine, like barati, or there were examples for only, you know, masculine, like doifi, but ula'ika, there aren't, I, I haven't come across any examples where it's only referring to, you know, one gender, uh, but it can be referred to one gender, right? So just keep, keep that in mind. Ha'ula'i and ula'ika, they both can be referring to one gender only at, at, at one time or, for, or to both genders, right? But in the Quran, I haven't really come across any verses where ula'ika is only talking about a female group of people or something that's, you know, a, a female pronoun or, or feminine noun, right? But inshallah, before we move on to that slide, uh, let's hear inshallah, like we, you know, on Monday and Fridays where we are um, talking about the project that our Sunday school students are putting together uh, for the Ramadan food boxes. <laughs> That we're trying to, uh, inshallah, uh, uh, raise money for so that we can buy the foods, the canned foods and items that we can, inshallah, pack with the Sunday school students, inshallah. So Sunday school students are going to uh, uh, assemble together before Ramadan and they're going to pack these and, you know, inshallah, we're going to be there helping them as well. Pack these boxes and hopefully we can, you know, help some people in need that will need the, these different types of foods in Ramadan to have suhoor and break their iftar, inshallah. Ta and this is a project that Sunday school students are working on. So inshallah, we're going to hear from one of the Sunday, stu Sunday school students, inshallah, uh, Aliza, uh, which is, you know, a very a brilliant student of ours, mashallah ta'ala. So she's going to talk to us a little bit about that program or that project. And then we're going to continue on, inshallah. Inshallah, Aliza, whenever you're ready. Are you, are you ready? Okay. Assalamu alaikum, Aliza. Wa alaikum, Assalam. You can tell us whenever you're ready, inshallah. Okay, I'll start now. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Aliza Khan. I'm a student in Sunday school and we are working together on a project to prepare some Ramadan food boxes for people in need so they can have iftar at home with their families during Ramadan. We all know the beautiful virtue of fasting because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, fasting is for me and I will reward it. We can't even imagine the reward for providing food for other fasting people. The prophet, peace be upon him, said, whoever helps break the fast of a fasting person, he will have the same reward as him without decreasing anything from the reward of the fasting person. We are encouraging community members to go to www.hcic.org and select Ramadan food boxes to contribute toward this cause and project of ours. Jazakallah khairan. Jazakallah khairan for that. That's very good, mashallah. Very clear, straight to the point, mashallah. So yeah, that, that, that link is also in the chat box, so inshallah, so we can contribute towards that. And hopefully we're gonna get together before Ramadan starts, and then we're going to pack these boxes with the Sunday school students, inshallah ta'ala. And we are going to um, hopefully pass them out and benefit, benefit people of the community or people that are, you know, uh, in dire need of these food items for Ramadan, inshallah. <clears throat> Jazakallah khairan for that, Aliza. Let me, okay, take it away. So inshallah. So now we're going to move on to Ula'ika, right? <clears throat> so that was Ha'ula'i. If the, are there any questions on the word? Ha'ula'i, before we move on. On the word Ha'ula'i, are there any questions on that? Is everything clear? Am I going too fast? Okay, perfect, inshallah. So inshallah, yeah, move on to the next word. Ula'ika, uh, right? <coughs> so Ula'ika as well. Ula'ika is, you know, not specific to any gender. Ula'ika means those and referring to something that's kind of far away. Also for plural, Ula'ika hum khayrul bariya is the example that we're looking at here. The in Surah Bayyina, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ula'ika, right? Those people or those 
you know, those people or those, you know, a uh, group of people, it is those whom they are, whom is also a, um, this is also a pronoun that's used sometimes uh, um, separately or also together with the word, right? So sometimes it comes separately like this, just to also give emphasis on the, on the word that, you know, those people are, you know, so-and-so, X, Y, and Z. Those people are, you know, are indeed or surely or, you know, it's just there to give more emphasis on the fact uh, of the matter, right? So, ula'ika, it is those whom they are, just to give more, you know, <clears throat> uh, um, uh, uh, just to stress the matter more, whom they are, khayrul, khayru means the best, you know, like we know in, in our own languages as well, khayr, you know, uh, the best things, the, you know, good things, uh, blessings, khayr, al-bariya, right, the creatures, right, al-bariya means uh, uh, creatures, right, so people that are on the land, the people that are on, uh, um, on this earth, right? So it's from the word, you know, like bar or bar, which, which can also refer to land as well. So bariya means creatures of the land. So any creature, humans, uh, you know, uh, um, for amongst all the creatures of the land, humans, animals, insects, you know, plants, creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, any living thing on the land, those people are the best of everything, right? So khayrul bariya, you know, uh, together is the best of creatures, meaning... Uh, and this is obviously referring to people that are, you know, believers, people that are human beings. We're the best of cre uh, creatures or the, or the best creation out of all the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? Ula'ika hum khayrul bariya. It is those, ula'ika, the word that we're looking at, whom they are the best of creatures, right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, before that verse, you know, gives like a criteria that if they fit this criteria, you know, they are iman, they, they, they have iman, they believe in the day of judgment, you know, they are, are you know, then they'll get jannah, they'll get paradise. And ula'ika hum khairul bariya, those people are the ones who are the best of creatures, right? So referring to, you know, uh, that those, you know, like, like I mentioned, those means something that's kind of far away or something that's, you know, that's, that, that has been mentioned in the past. So Allah mentions that criteria first and then refers back to that criteria, right? Those people are gonna, you know, who fit that criteria are the best of creatures, right? <clears throat> Another example here as well. So, um, I mean, even in the previous example, it's not gender specific, right? Anyone that fits the criteria of having Iman, of, you know, believing in the day of judgment, etc., they're gonna be the best of creatures, male or female. Similarly, in the next uh, example as well, Surah Baqarah, uh, you know, we all know this verse. And the second part of the verse is Right? Wa means and, a letter, a harf, which means and. And ulaika, the word that we're looking at, um, it means those, right? So those people are whom, again, whom also came again, just like in the previous example, whom they are, just to give more emphasis. Just, just to stress the matter, uh, the, the fact even more that those people are al muflihun. They are the ones who are successful, right? They're the ones who are successful, right? So I mean, even before this verse, in, in the you know in the first few verses of Surah Baqarah, Allah gives us a criteria of that as well. That people that pray their salah, they believe in the unseen, they they believe in the day of judgment. You know, they they are they have iman. So whoever fits that criteria, ulaika ala hudam mir rabbihim. They're 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 people. That are on the guidance, they're on the right path, and wa ulaika those people whom they are al muflihun. They are also the ones who are successful, meaning in this world and in the hereafter. Right. So whoever you know uh, understands or encapsulates those core beliefs, those core uh, you know uh, um, uh, uh, that that criteria Allah mentions, and whoever you know kind of uh, uh, I guess internalizes it, inshallah. They're going to be successful in this world and in the next world, right? So, inshallah, you know, we all, we, inshallah, may Allah subhanahu wa make us all amongst, uh, you know, the muflihin, inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all make us amongst those people who are khairul bariya as well, the best of creatures the, and muflihun, successful in this world and in the next world, right? So, this is an example, both these examples are, uh, are, are, you know, they're used for anyone, anyone that fits the criteria, male or female, anyone that fits the criteria. It will, it will refer to them, right? There's, there's no specific gender for feminine or masculine, like, you know, like, like the previous example for ha'ula'i, for ha'ula'i banati, we said that was for feminine, ha'ula'i doifi, that was for masculine, but ula'ika, in, the, in these examples and in more examples in the Quran, 
that I couldn't find. Maybe I'll keep searching for more examples, but I couldn't find any examples that was specific to a gender, right? That was specific to only females or only males. But they're both, you know, wherever it's used in the Quran so far that I, w w what I've seen is they're, they're used as a plural for both, you know, meaning male and female can, could fall into this or, be, or could be included in this group of people that are, you know, good or bad. Because ulaika, I mean, these are, these are examples of good things, like khairul bari is a good thing, muflihun is a good thing, but ulaika could also be used for other examples in the Quran that come for a bad thing, right? So, I mean, for example, in Surah Bayina, the previous example is ulaika hum sharrul bariya, right? Those people are the worst of creatures, right? So it could come as a bad thing, like, uh, you know, people that are astray or misguidance, but we just obviously, you know, for us is to learn the Quran and, you know, for us to internalize the good things so we could be uh, included and uh, be a part of these beautiful groups of people like Muflihun or the Salihin, the pious people, the, you know, the Abrar, the, the, the people that are, you know, uh, uh, um, they have piety, they're, they're, they're steadfast on, uh, on, on their religious matters, etc. right? So, Ula'ika comes multiple times throughout the Quran as well, just like Ha Ula'i. And um, all these combined, all these six words that we covered so far, you know, Hada, Hadihi, and Dalika, and Tilka, and then these two words, Ha Ula'i and Ula'ika, they come multiple times in the Quran. So, these are only six words that we covered so far, right? Six words that we covered, but when you add all the times they come together in the Quran, they come over, you know, uh, uh, I think close to a thousand words already in the Quran, right? So close to a thousand words already in the Quran. So like, like we mentioned, uh, you know, last week that there were, there's about like 75, 76,000 words in the Quran. And we're going to try to, uh, you know, cover 50%, of, <clears throat> excuse me. We're, we're going to try to cover 50% of the Quran through these frequently used words that, that, that you know, we'll, we'll see throughout the weeks. And uh, these six demonstrated pronouns were, you know, a part of that list as well. And the, the only six words that we covered, but they already came a thousand times in the Quran. So that means if you learn these six words, that means you already know a thousand words from the Quran already, right? So it's amazing how that works and how that adds up to inshallah. And I mean, that's the whole, uh, I guess, the secret formula to understand the Quran faster instead of just, you know, looking at translation, right? I mean, that's obviously going to help as well, inshallah, as we move on, as we move forward. But um, also try to keep these words in mind. Hada, hadihi, dalika, tilka. Now add the add these two as well. Ha ulai and ulaika to your uh, you know to your vocabulary as well. So when they do come across in the Quran, we can keep an eye out for them and understand them and you know kind of identify start starting to identify some words that we learn in the Quran, inshallah. And you know as we start building up words, it's gonna get easier and better, inshallah, for us, inshallah. Are there any questions on these two words so far? Uh, Mother, I mean, here, here you mentioned ulaika, it is those and for whom it is separate are. But in the previous example, you mentioned ha ulai, these are. So, yeah. So, ha ulai, okay. So, yeah, these ha are, yeah. ulai, these are. These are together. <clears throat> yeah, so, I mean, so, I mean, yeah, so, I mean, the, the, the R is just, you know, it's, it's going to be implied. But there isn't, there is no specific word in, in Arabic which means R, right? In, like in English, you know, it's just um, it's just part of the word. It's, it's, it's going to be part of ulaika or whom because ulaika and whom they have a similar meaning here, or you know, even ha ulai, or I mean, I'm, uh, yeah, we didn't use it for that one, but basically, yeah, for whom uh, and ulaika, they have a similar meaning. Like ulaika is referring to a you know a noun, and then whom is just a a a a, a pronoun that can also be used separately, like this, like like in this verse, ulaika whom separate. But whom also comes as, or whom can also be connected to a, a, a noun, or uh, it could be connected to a um, a verb as well, right? So it could be connected to a verb and noun, right? But I mean, the, the R in parentheses is just implied, basically. So there's no there's no uh, Arabic word for the word R. I, I, I just put it there just, just so that we could understand the uh, the translation properly. Yeah. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah. Assalamu alaikum. Um, may I offer uh, some other perspective as well? Yeah, inshallah. Um, Maurice, by this is a sentence that's made up of a bunch of nominal pieces, okay? Uh, uh, this, this other than the, uh, the, the we, which is an and conjunction. Yeah. So we have ulaika and hom. They are the first part of this nominal sentence. And then al-muflihun is the second part of the nominal sentence. 
And in Arabic, when you have such a nominal sentence, one without a verb, that uh, the way it is understood in Arabic is that the first part of the nominal sentence by default is the second part of the nominal sentence. Okay, we call that mubtada and khabar. I'm sure he'll get to it eventually, maybe. But ula'ika hum, those, they, Okay. That's the first part of the nominal sentence. And the second one is al-mufli'oon. And the R is understood. And that is just in more than just Arabic. I believe it may exist in some other uh, Latin language as well. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. I think it does. Like, even in our own languages, like Urdu or I speak Bengali, Bangla, we don't really have a word for R, right? So like, you know, just like he was saying, that is, is, the, is the first part of the sentence. And then the last part, right? for example, the first example, ulaika hum, the first part, then khairul bariya is you know, like the result of that, or you know, or, or 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 what it's referring to, that those people are who, where are they, you know, where are they, what are they, what are they doing? Khairul bariya is the answer that they are the best of creatures, or even sharul bariya, they are the worst of creatures, right? So yeah, this is it's understood, it's implied that ours is there, hmm. part of ulaika or ha ulai, or you know. Like, for example, um, the first word that we did, this, hadha, this, uh, hadha means this, but then the is, like this is, is also already understood and implied, right? So, for example, if you say, you know, hadha kitabun, this is a book, you know, uh, like if you translate it word by word, it's, 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 it's going gonna, it's gonna to translate to this book, right? The, the, the is is not translated because there's no word for is. It's just implied in the hadha, in the, the mubtada, like you mentioned. But, um, yeah. So, I mean, that's more of the, of the grammar side of things. We're not really getting into grammar right now, or, I mean, maybe eventually later on, inshallah, because, there's, you know, we have to start from, like, basic stuff, inshallah. But this is, like, more of a, like I, like I keep mentioning, uh, more frequently used words that will come across a lot, you know, as we read Quran right now in Ramadan, outside of Ramadan, etc., that we can, we can start to identify it right now, inshallah, to help us understand some of it. <clears throat> inshallah, yeah. That's, uh, any other questions on... So far, what we've covered, you know, these six demonstrated pronouns. Sean, next week, we can cover the relative pronouns, all three of them. And then uh, we'll have a lot of words under our belt, inshallah. inshallah. So, yeah, try, try to remember these words, try to learn these words. Uh, then I'll, I'll ask you again next week, inshallah, as well, you know, what these words mean and stuff like that, inshallah. Just to keep it more uh, um, preserved in our in our minds, in our hearts, inshallah, inshallah. Right? So let's see, there's a question here. Let's see. Okay, yeah. Is there any questions that no one wants to say? They could say in the chat box too, as well, inshallah. Mm -hmm. But I think it's pretty simple so far. It should, it should be pretty easy, inshallah, hopefully. And hopefully it's uh, clear and understandable, inshallah. <coughs> Alhamdulillah. Okay, inshallah. So yeah, we'll conclude here tonight. Jazakallah khairan for joining in. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, make this a means for our success in this world and the hereafter. Make this a means for us to learn the Quran, understand the Quran, and internalize the Quran, inshallah. Uh, you know, our ultimate goal is that, inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala let the barakah of this, inshallah, reach our, our youth, our children, our future generations as well, inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always keep this, uh, um, the Quran in our household, in our hearts, you know, uh, throughout our generations, because we never know what's going to happen. Ten generations, you know, if, if inshallah, you know, the world is here uh, by that time, we never know what's going to happen. Um, you know, four or five, six generations down the line, if our children are Muslim or not, right? I mean, inshallah, they are. We make dua for that, inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa taala keep Islam alive. Uh, you know, in our in our progeny, may Allah subhanahu wa taala make them leaders, make them pioneers of of the Quran, and uh, make them, you know, uh, uh, um. Uh, 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 leaders and inspiration for other Muslims in the land, inshallah ta'ala as well. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all of our efforts and, you know, grant us the highest abode in paradise as well with the muflihun, with the salihin, with the abrar, with, you know, with the prophets, inshallah ta'ala. Ameen. Jazakumullah khairan for joining in. Uh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.